Good evening and welcome to Your Call. This week I'm joined by a man who is a politician and a gentleman. A man who's been former finance minister, external affairs minister and defence minister. BGP leader Jaswant Singh. Well, uh, thank you for coming, sir. And uh, I mentioned defence minister, but of course, that stint, though relatively short uh, compared to your other two stints, That's right. is something which I think you felt particularly close to because of your background in the armed forces. When you see what's happening today, what is your reaction at the end of a week which has been a turbulent one? Well, I'm, I'm filled with great concern. And if I use the word uh, despair, it's not an exaggeration. Because, uh, as I think in, in an earlier talk with you, I used the phrase, this is the sword arm of the country. Mm -hmm. You can't blunt it. And what, it, what the last week, it's not just last week, uh, the previous so many years, what it has demonstrated, an absence of understanding about what the armed forces really are, an absence of grasping the sensibilities of the armed forces, a total, near total disjunct between the Ministry of Defense and the armed forces. Mm -hmm an absence of leadership from the political community, by which I really mean both the Prime Minister and the Defence Minister. After all, the Prime Minister is the Chairman of the Cabinet Committee on Security. But given that, sir, and mm. given the shocking details that seem to be in, in that letter which became public, this isn't something that happened overnight. And of course, uh, people within the UPA will say, look at what happened in Cargill. And we've seen recommendations by the uh, expert committee on Cargill, recommendations of the group of ministers then. Nothing happened with successive governments, NDA or UPA. So in that sense, the political class, can you, finger, uh, can you single out just the prime minister and current defense minister? It's a no, large I don't, issue. I don't wish to do that, but because you've referred to the Cargill, I, I had uh, quite a good deal to do with Cargill. Yes. I don't want to speak in first person singular, but the reality is, and this is a fact, the Kargil uh, attack on India is the only battle, should I put it, that India has fought since independence, after which, in which firstly not a single inch of land was conceded, mm -hmm. secondly after the battle war whatever you wish to call it, the government of the day ordered a full review of what had happened. Mm -hmm. And it's a brilliant uh, report that late uh, Subramaniam, because the review comprised Subramaniam and my friend George Verghese and others. Mm -hmm. Following upon that report, a committee, a group of ministers was instituted under Mr. Uh, Advani. It's a wonderful report, that report of the group of ministers it addresses all issues. And there were recommendations in, about the Defence Ministry. But you're right. Nothing happened with those recommendations? Not nothing. Very little. Yeah, well, that is a qualitative term, little or very little, but not satisfactory. The approach was not. The approach is because once issues or matters get, get trapped in the liberance of bureaucracy, mm -hmm. uh, which is what I meant by a, a huge gap between the ministry, that's the civil part of it, and the armed forces, they inhabit the same physical territory in South Block. And we did, we had, one of the recommendations was, and it was on paper implemented, that there should be total integration between the Ministry of Defense and the three services of the armed forces. We had, there were various other recommendations. We were told they are now integrated, but they are not integrated. There is a separation, uh, us and them, 
this must not be. Then in fact, I'd like to go across also to someone else who has, mm -hmm. uh, when we brought up Kargil, somebody whose uh, son actually died in Kargil. Uh -huh. His parents, uh, Colonel Thapar and his wife, uh, their young son, uh, Lieutenant Vijayan Thapar, had died in Kargil. Uh -huh. And let's just go across uh, to them to see what they have to ask. And we'll come back to that issue which had been raised yes, also yes, about the course, hostilities. There is one question in my mind that why Kargil, 10th uh, anniversary of Kargil was not celebrated. There was no leader in Kargil on the 10th anniversary of Kargil. Nobody bothered and I felt very hurt also because uh, we are bringing politics in army and that is very damaging. It is really damaging the morale of the army. I agree with you. I, I share totally what you say. It's not just Kargil. With great difficulty we observe uh, the achievements of the Indian army uh, in Bangladesh. We have virtually forgotten mm, the IPKF and what the, uh, the sufferings, for example, of the IPKF. Why has this happened? Because I think uh, the conflict of uh, political interest between political parties has caused a lot of casualty in the spirit. My son did not die for any party. He died for his country. Absolutely, of course I agree. He I, I mean, I am sorry that I... How can I refute or refuse what you are saying? I am... I, I don't want to speak in the sense, but... For example, my wife, she's an army daughter. She married me, she's an army wife. And her, her elder son is also an army officer. So if we are not army, if I am not army, if she is not army, she would fully empathize with what mm -hmm. you are saying. And she's yeah. bitterly, deeply critical of the way that, uh, in fact, as she told me, I told her that I was coming to this program, and she said, you must say it then. Now, I don't know if I should or not, but I'll say it. She said, all this is, all that we witnessed today that is happening is so as to ensure that some uh, chain of promotions, etc., takes place at the cost of the entire edifice of the army. It is this, these things which have brought this bonding in the army to such a state. Colonel Thapar, Mrs. Thapar, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this uh, program thank tonight. You. Let me gro go across, sir, to a question, well, uh, from someone in your constituency, but let's just see mm -hmm. what he had to say. Let's mm -hmm. just go across to Darjeeling. Uh, hello, Jasmin, sir. Hello. Uh, I'm Colonel K. Shering from your Karma Bhumi, that is Darjeeling. <laughs> and the kind of scam that is surrounding a North Block and South Block, the low morale of uh, troops, at least I am not very happy. Uh, my morale is low. I am sure the, my friends in the borders, their morale is also low. Now, in view of this kind of circumstances, uh, do you think that in case of uh, any outbreak of hostility between uh, our adversaries, amongst our, uh, with our advers adversaries, uh, do you think we will be able to do well in that? The, the question raised uh, by the gentleman from Darjeeling, who made the point that the morale of the armed forces... The key to your question is about morale. Surely this is an example of very poor morale. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if deficiencies Look, the, the, if deficiencies become public, but you must know that the soldiers, sailors, I mean, they deal with that equipment. They are familiar with what is and what is not. They know what the deficiencies are, broadly, not in detail. Now, it's the appalling ignorance that, unfortunately, mm -hmm. by the armed forces and their functioning, that broadly, uh, causes this kind of, uh, I think, uh, unwarranted comment. But it does dent the state of morale. What damages morale much more is uh, this cobbling within the senior ranks of the army. This is very damaging. And moral is to physical is really four is to one. It's not so much Mm, equipment deficiencies which dent the fighting quality of a force is the absence of moral and effective leadership. In fact, uh, when we come to that, we've seen the case of uh, the Lieutenant General, one Lieutenant General now taking the Army Chief to court, former head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, a crucial post. Leave aside the politicians, the squabbling 
within the army. Uh, your wife mentioned over promotions, whatever this may be about, a CBI case against another man who is in the line to be an army chief. This is, is, very is that this really is something which you would no, like to tell a, senior army officers that I you have, need to rethink about? And this is very shabby. This is not acceptable. And this is not conduct behoving uh, an officer and a gentleman. There's nobody to judge. You have to judge yourself. And I had occasion very painfully um, to write and say um, that we, it's for the chief. Who am I to judge? After all, it's a very distinguished mm -hmm. soldier. Mm -hmm. But all that I said he ought to do is to remember that uh, inscription on the Chetwood Hall. Because um, after the parade and passing out parade, great slow march into the Chetwood Hall. On top of that is an inscription by Field Marshal Chetwood, the, the security, honor, and welfare of your country comes first. Mm -hmm. And always and every time. Then, of course, it goes further. Of your men, you command. And thereafter, at last, is your own. I don't want to judge. Mm -hmm. Because I think I diminish uh, not so much the person as the great office of the chief of army staff in judging personally. I, I cannot claim objectivity. The office is more important than the individual. Mm -hmm. If you keep chipping at this office, then you will damage the effectiveness of it and you will, of course, uh, affect morale. You have a situation, I'm very sorry to have to say, my colleagues in Parliament start shouting, uh, throw him out, you can't. Can they imagine what effect this has on, because television is now ubiquitous, it's everywhere, and troops watching this, what will they think? And when you have MPs like Lalu Prasad Yadav, other MPs who I think the armed forces and many people would not regard as, say, the epitome of uh, morality, taking on an army chief, the institution for corruption, what do you think? He says uh, the army uh, chief wants to fight elections. Oh, come on, don't let us please all of, don't reduce everything to the level of absurd politicking. This is absurdity. Mm -hmm. It's so absurd as to almost be an obscenity. Uh, politics is not the end, be all and end all of life. Everything is not politically oriented. Here the issues of the combat effectiveness of the armed forces. If the issue is of national security. Issue really is of the effectiveness of the sword arm of the country. For heaven's sake, don't reduce it to the kind of level that we witness every day in Parliament. Uh, I, I think one of the other worrying aspects was about the question of corruption in defence procurements and these yes. uh, infamous uh, Tatra trucks which have now come up. Now, the questions have been raised about the fact that these have been in use since 1986. Irregularities in procurement clearly have been in place since pretty much then. Why has no former defence minister, government, army chief raised this earlier? I don't. I'm guilty. In between, I've been a defence minister. I must admit, uh, this never came to my mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so in that sense, when I, if I say and make a comment here, I'm just as guilty as any of the previous defence ministers would be. I cannot uh, cite ignorance as my defence. I did not know of it. I did not take any action. It's no good saying I was not there long enough. Yes, you're right. I am also partly to blame. But what has happened is uh, at another level of uh, why this became... Why has this become? Not just Tatra. Uh, it was in 1986, uh, around 86, 87. I believe it was a kind of a climactic year. Mm -hmm. mm, because then that is when the infamous Bofors uh, hit India. I had gone with General Sundarji to the trials of Bofors guns and I had said, this is a very good gun. It's very badly procured. Because I said it's a very good gun, my party got very annoyed with me. <laughs> it's true. Now, but I also tried very hard to find out. I went to Sweden at my own cost. Mm -hmm. And I fought for this issue until I, uh, I came against the wall um, of non-cooperation. Then I realized that Bofors will have very long-term consequences in defense procurement. 
because if we were not able to identify and award condign punishment to the wrongdoers, then of course people will say we can do it. And there, of course, and then of course it was only about eight to six out or eight to four hot crores. Now it's in hundreds of crores. The Tehelka scandal in the NDA of government course, tenure. Okay. But I think the saddest part of it is that you'll have defence ministers come and go, mm -hmm. you have army chiefs come and go, but the corruption in the procurement system has not gone. And the worry is that on the other hand, you become so cautious that you slow down essential That's procurement right. modernization. Really. yet That's the right. rot has not been stemmed at all. No, two things have happened. You're right, absolutely right. What has happened is that uh, we have now a system that has become dysfunctional. And because it is dysfunctional, if we were to assume it is therefore pure and uh, unsullied, on the, uh, on the contrary, the reverse has happened. You see, George, when after Telka, etc., et and reinstated as defense minister, started sending any proposal for procurement uh, as a question, as an aspect to the CVC before he even looked at the file. And I told him, George, this is wrong. The CVC or the uh, CNDGE, or CBI, I did also use a phrase once, that we are crippled by the C3. The tyranny of the three Cs, C3, I think you said, yes. yes. The tyranny of the C. We are responsible. I am a defense minister, then I am responsible for all the good. If I take credit for all the good, then I must also take discredit for what is not good. Stand up and be recognized. Oh, no, it is not going to happen. It is going to happen. And it is going to happen. And of course, George by then was so traumatized that he wouldn't take a decision. Mm -hmm. Now, we are suffering because of that. No decisions are taken because suppose we were to make a mistake, oh, but for heaven's sake, governance is all about taking decisions, mm -hmm. not about immobility of thought. What if we make a mistake? For heaven's sake again, take decisions. And out of ten, even if you make five mistakes, at least on five, every mistake will teach you something. This is what has happened. The government is paralyzed into inaction because the, the possibility of a mistake paralyzes them. Let me, let me shift, sir. We've discussed a yes, large extent yeah. of the program on what's been happening the last week. Let me shift also to somebody who's been in politics for over, mm -hmm. for, I think, from 19 years. Uh, it's my ninth. Do you realize, Sonia? Just on another day, purely by chance, well, somebody sitting next to me was looking at the who's who in Parliament. And he said, Sir, you've been, this is your ninth term in Parliament. Since 1980, I think you've been yeah, a Rajya Sabha MP. A, remark, a remarkable feat, I have to say. And Rajya Sabha is interesting because we've seen this week a very sad situation mm -hmm. in Jharkhand over the Rajya Sabha yeah. elections and what happened there with an independent candidate and the charges back and forth. The BGP went through a state of great turbulence after the last general election. We're now looking towards the next one. What do you think, has the BGP managed to course correct, why no, this I'm afraid issue uh, at this point? No, I'm afraid I can't, uh, I, I can't realistically and honestly say that that court needed course correction, recognition of what the deficiencies are, therefore course correction has been fully recognized and implemented. I can't. Mm, the state of the party is well enough known to the leadership uh, in the party, I have often pointed it out. What is the situation today? It's really rather like the later Mughal. There's a very good account of the later Mughals by a great historian who says that the Mughals were declining, but the Maratha confidence was also declining. Now, that is very bad for the country because you can't have the decline of the Congress party is evident. But they simultaneously, they cannot, just cannot be declined of the BJP because it's a national imperative. There, there cannot be a political vacuum in the country. Is it a battle for who will be the next prime ministerial candidate? Because you're either recovering so. from an election or looking towards the next election no, in India today. No, if you permit a very interesting phrase, uh, I think it's more usage in UP than elsewhere. 
न सूत न कपास जुलाहों में लठम लठ दस नो दस टप इट्स नॉट एज द प्रीमियरशिप ऑफ द कंट्री इज देयर फॉर द टीचिंग इज देयर फॉर एनीबॉडी टू सो इट्स नॉट एज इफ एनीबॉडी इज फाइटिंग फॉर द प्रीमियरशिप आई डोंट थिंक दैट ऑट टू बी एट ऑल इट्स इट्स टू बी एबल टू मीट द चैलेंज ऑफ द सरकमस्टेंसेस एंड इट्स नो गुड माय सेइंग नहीं नहीं ऐसा कुछ नहीं है बिकॉज़ देन आई वुड नॉट बी कैंडिड आई वुड नॉट I don't want to be dishonest to myself. We're finally at the end of the show, sir, and I'd like to go back many years to your old school, uh, Mayo mm-hmm. College, where we have some young students to ask you a question. Good evening, sir. Being your grandson and the fourth generation at Mayo College, <laughs> I wanted to ask you a question. Yes. I've seen your name prominently on the honor board in the assembly hall. Mm-hmm. What is the mantra for success at Mayo College? what is the month for success no you must uh, you must look two things believe that you can reach the horizon it is not as if horizon is not reachable dream to reach for the horizon and work for it secondly catch uh, realize and accept that you can catch both ends of the rainbow in your two hands This is not dreaming. Do that and you will succeed.